follow along as I show you how I got into resin printing for the low, low price of $340. So I bought about the cheapest 3D resin printer I could find. This guy was 50% off because they were closing it out. It's a frozen Sonic Mini. It's not HD, it's not, you know, super high resolution, it has a relatively small build area, but it's a resin printer and it works pretty well. Now, of course, you have to buy a uh, bottle of resin to go with it, so I bought this $33 bottle of resin. Now, you might think, hey, this is all I need. I'm ready to go. The big thing to recognize when you're buying a resin printer is that it's not just the resin printer. You're going to need a lot of accessories to finish the print. You'll need a washer, a curer, and various accessories to move the resin around safely. If you're buying a real budget printer, your accessories might cost more than the printer. If you're buying a high-end printer, the accessories will be a much smaller percentage of your total purchase price. So I printed a single test print and I got some alcohol from the pharmacy and I kind of swirled the test print around in a Tupperware and it kind of worked. Then I had to take them outside and put them out in the sun to cure them. And you can do that but I really don't recommend it. Um, you know, after doing this one time, the resin's super messy. Um, having to wait for, you know, sunlight is kind of annoying sometimes if it's cloudy, rainy, nighttime. Um, so I went out and spent another 105 bucks on a two-in-one washing and curing machine. Now you can buy curing machines cheaper than 100 bucks. You can buy washing machines cheaper than 100 bucks. It's a little hard to get both of them together. Um, you know, this was a different brand. It's Elgo. It's the Mercury Plus version two, um, and it has a build volume that's very comparable with my 3D printer. So if you bought a much more expensive 3D printer, you might have to buy a slightly more expensive washing station. Um, now, I also had to buy some accessories, you know, the resin, you definitely need nitrile gloves to come with them. Um, the printer came with like one pair, but you're going to spend 10 bucks at Harbor Freight to buy a box of nitrile gloves. I also bought this $10 stainless steel filtering funnel. It has a nice reusable filter in it, so you can take the resin from the vat when you're done printing, pour it back into the resin container, and not worry too much about strand, you know, random pieces falling back into your resin. And of course, since I bought this nice wash and cure station that has a gallon container for washing, I had to pay 40 bucks for a gallon of 99% isopropyl alcohol from the local hardware store. So when I get all this stuff together, we're looking at $340. Now you're also going to want a well-ventilated area to use this thing. So although my resin says low odor, not smelly, it has odor and it's smelly, and you don't want to do it in your house. Um, I have it out in the garage. I crack the garage door open um, for just a little bit of extra ventilation. That's probably not necessary because as long as the cover is on the printer, there's not a lot of smell that gets out, but every time you lift the cover up to um, top up the resin or to remove the print, it gets pretty smelly. I'm pretty happy with this wash and cure station. Um, for $100, it seems like it's providing me pretty good value. So using the 3D printer, um, you have to do some software work to come up with the frozen file, which is basically a stack of images for photolithography in the resin. Um, you can just use the sample data file they provide with the printer for your first print. So the only real calibration step is zeroing the build plate. Um, and essentially, you loosen some screws, you make it go all the way down, you put a piece of paper between it and the display screen, and then you tighten the screws up so that the build plate is flat and level and very close to the display screen. Then when you put the reservoir in, it has a clear plastic layer membrane between the display and the resin. You fill up the reservoir about a third to a half way. You have to leave extra room. When the build plate comes down, it'll push resin up, so you definitely don't want to get anywhere near the top because you don't want this overflowing. If you have a really large piece, this means you may have to come back a couple hours later and um, refill and top up the reservoir of resin so you don't run out of resin. This guy's been running for an hour and you really can't see what's going on under there. So you can look at the screen and see what pattern it's projecting each time, but you just have to trust that it's actually working until that thing gets high enough up for you to see underneath and make sure something's actually attached to the build plate and so forth. 
So it's not very noisy, but it is annoying because every five or six seconds that servo motor goes up and down. It's also a little stinky to have in the room you're sitting in. So you really do want to have a separate room that's ventilated for this. When you get done, you let the resin drip back into the reservoir. They make special brackets, which I've paid another 10 bucks to order one, but I don't have it yet, um, which allows you to bracket and just kind of sit the build plate at a 45 degree angle over the resin pit to drip everything in. And then you wash it. In this case, it's an alcohol. They do make water soluble resins. Uh, I haven't tried any of those, but it might be a little cheaper because water is a lot cheaper than isopropyl alcohol. After you wash it, you put it into the curing station and cure it. Um, with the concentrated UV lights from the LEDs here, it can take just three or four minutes depending on the size of your model. And so this is a lot um, easier and more even than putting it out in the sun and going out to turning it every so often. So 340 bucks is a decent amount of money. Um, and you're definitely not getting top of the line equipment for that, but it's very reasonable in price compared to five years ago, for example. And if you're looking to print small things that are high resolution, so in my case, I'm looking at miniatures for um, tabletop gaming, this is you know, really something you need to have because you can print larger miniatures with an FDM printer, but if you want to print small 25 millimeter scale miniatures and have reasonable quality, you really do need to use a resin printer. But you don't necessarily need to spend a whole bunch of money for the best resin printer out there. This is a pretty bottom of the line resin printer and I'm quite happy with the quality it's giving me.